Hey there folks and welcome back. Over the last couple of lessons we've been talking about line integrals of scalar fields, but now we want to extend the notion of a line integral to apply to vector fields as well. Now the definition of a line integral of a vector field is a little unusual when you first see it, so it'll be helpful to build up some motivation. Our motivation today comes from physics. If you've taken a physics course in the past, or maybe even in some of your math courses, you've likely talked about work. In physics, work is defined as the force applied to an object times the distance over which that force is applied. So at the most basic level, if I'm trying to push a box across the floor and I'm exerting a constant force on the box, then the work I do is that force times the distance the box travels. Work equals force times distance. Now there are a couple ways that we can increase the sophistication here. For instance, we could apply the force not in the direction of the box's movement, but maybe at an angle. Take this second scenario, for example. Here I'm pulling the box using a handle, and so the force is actually being applied in this direction. Some of that force, this horizontal component specifically, is helping to move the box forward, but this vertical component is not. So our work is no longer force times distance. I first need to find the component of the force that's actually helping me to move the box forward. I can do this using the dot product. You may have learned in physics or linear algebra that if you take the dot product of this vector with a vector pointing in this direction, you're gonna get the component of the force vector that moves in this direction. So maybe it's believable that the work done on the box is the dot product of the force vector with the displacement vector, the vector pointing from our initial point to our terminal point. Okay, finally we have this third situation where we're pushing a container forward, but the container has a leak at the bottom. So as we push it, it's actually becoming lighter and lighter and less and less force is required to move it forward. So maybe over the course of the trip, I apply less and less force. The force here is no longer constant. Well, if the force isn't constant, we can't calculate the work as force times distance. The force is changing. So what you may have learned in Calc 2 is that the total work done on this container is actually given by an integral. Since our force is changing, we approximate the work done over a really small length as f of x, our force function, times that tiny change in distance, dx. We're going to integrate those values along the x-axis from our starting point x equals a, to our terminal point, x equals b, and that is the total work done on the container. Okay, we've spent quite a bit of time talking about work, but what does all this have to do with line integrals of vector fields? Well, it turns out quite a bit. We're going to motivate the definition of a line integral using the following work problem. So let's suppose that we start with a vector field capital F, which in our minds is going to represent a force field. At every point in our domain, we have a little vector, and that vector represents a force being applied at that point. It might be a gravitational force or a magnetic force, doesn't matter, some force being applied at that point. Now within our force field, we also draw this curved line, which we're gonna think of like a track. Suppose that we have a little particle moving along the track from the starting point here to the terminal point here. As the particle moves, the force field is going to do work on it. It could do positive work with the forces pushing the particle forward along the track, or it could do negative work with the forces opposing the particle's direction of movement. The question is, as the particle moves along the track, how much work is done by the force field? Okay, let's give this curve a name. We'll call it C. And suppose that we parameterize C using the vector function R of T, where T here goes between A and B. That means that this initial point is R of A, and this terminal point is R of B. Now notice that the force applied to our particle as it moves along the track is not constant. So much like that third situation on the last slide, we might expect an integral to come into play. So I'm gonna do what we usually do with integrals. I'm gonna slice up our curve. On each one of these tiny little pieces, I'm gonna estimate the work being done by the force field. So let's zoom in on a piece. Maybe this piece here is the ith piece, and our particle is sitting right here at r of ti. 
the particle wants to continue moving along the track, right? It wants to move from this point in the direction of our tangent vector. Maybe we'll say that this vector, capital T of R of Ti, is the unit tangent vector, the tangent vector of unit length at R of Ti. Now our particle wants to move in this direction, but it's also dealing with this force from our force field. Maybe the force is pointing over here. Some of this force might be moving the particle in the direction of the tangent vector, but some of it might not. So we have to think back to that second scenario from the last slide. To find the component of force pushing our particle in this direction, we need to take the dot product. We get a force of F of R of Ti dot T of R of Ti. That's the force pushing our particle along the track. Now, of course, work is force times distance. We found the force. We have to multiply the distance the particle travels on this small arc, which is delta Si, the change in arc length. Okay, great. We've approximated the work done by our force field over a small piece of track. To approximate the total work, we should add the results. The total work is approximately the sum from i equals 1 to n of the individual work, f of r of ti dot t of r of ti delta si. We can now find the total work done by our force field by taking the limit as the number of cuts n goes off to infinity. That's gonna turn this sum into an integral, an integral along our curve C. So the total work is the integral along C of f dot t ds. Ah, but this is a line integral. f dot t, a dot product of two vector functions, is really a scalar function. So this is a line integral of a scalar field, something we know how to work with. Well, this is great, but in practice, I don't really want to have to work with this function capital T. Remember, capital T tells us the unit tangent vector to our curve C at any given point. And honestly, I don't really want to compute that. So on the next slide, I'm going to clean up this integral to get rid of that T, and then we'll define the line integral of our vector function. All right, let's clean up this integral by removing this term T, shall we? We can rewrite the integral by introducing our parametric curve r of t. This gives us the integral from a to b of f of r of t dot t of r of t, and then ds we know can be written as the norm of r prime t dt. Ah, but wait a second. Capital T is the unit tangent vector to our curve. And if you think way back to our lessons on parametric equations, you may remember that the tangent vector to the curve is given by the derivative of r of t. So t is r prime t, but we have to divide by its norm to make it a unit vector. r prime t over the norm of r prime t. At this point, you can see there's going to be some cancellation. We're simply left with the integral from a to b of f of r of t dot r prime t dt. And now, folks, I know this looks complicated, but really, it's quite nice. All we need to know is a parametrization of our curve C. We're going to plug that into our vector field F, take the dot product with R prime T, and integrate. That's what we need to do to find the total work. So this last quantity is super important. It gives us a convenient way to find the work done by our force field as we move along a track, and so therefore, this is what we're going to define to be our line integral. So for shorthand, we simply write this integral as the integral along C of f dot dr. Maybe that makes sense since dr by dt is r prime t, and therefore dr should be r prime t dt. This is our notation. We call this the line integral of our vector function, and we compute it using this formula. The interpretation of the result is the work done by our force field in moving the particle along the track C. Okay, folks, I know there's been a lot of theory in this lesson, but don't worry. We're at the end, and in the next video, it's going to be all examples. I'm going to wrap up this lesson by telling you about one more common notation that you might see when working with line integrals of vector fields. Suppose that we're working with the vector field F whose components are given by p of xy and q of xy. 
And suppose as well that our curve C is parametrized by R of t. According to our definition on the last slide, the line integral of f is the integral along C of f dot dr. Well, I can write f as pq, which is what I've done here, and I can write dr as, well, the derivative of r dt, x prime t, y prime t, dt. When I take the dot product, I get p times x prime t dt plus q times y prime t dt. Ah, but hold on a second. x prime t dt is exactly dx, and y prime t dt is exactly dy. So I could write this exact same expression as the integral along c of p dx plus q dy. This is another common notation for our line integral. So if you see this thing out in the wild, don't get scared. It's the same thing as the line integral of our vector field.